It's really God is an awesome and he's a great God. And we trust in our mighty Savior. I'd like to invite you all to stand with me. And I'd just like to call on Sister Munila, who just opened us in a word of prayer.
the scripture be left us by Brother Suraj.
doing good and even greater. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite you all to stand with me again before we turn the Lord to our pastor. And I will enter his gates with thanks to me. Of our sins, uh, 
then God will not hear those praises. God will not hear those hallelujahs as, as, as it were. Alright? Prayer meetings are a must for every church. As I shared with you uh, so much last year that uh, one of the things that the early church did, they gathered regularly and um, collectively they got together and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. Very foundational to the early church prayer meetings. You'll always find the early church in the prayer meetings. Prayer meetings are wonderful. I grew up uh, that way having lots of prayer meetings. That's why in Power and Science Ministries we have released our entire ministry with lots and lots of prayers. And we will continue to do so. Because the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, say the Lord. So folks, whatever a church is doing today, unless it is, it is not supported by prayer, then it is not going to last. It is not going to accomplish great things. What does Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 says? Call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things. Although we are hurried to do a lot of things, we are hurried to get from one place to the next, you know, to so, so many things demand our time. But always remember that begin your day with prayer seeking the face of God. Amen? So, lots of times you find that Prayer meetings are killed by men praying, but at the same time, their lives are not right with God. I want us to think about that today. What does sin do? It brings a wall. It builds a wall between us and God. A man might stand high in the community. Man might stand mighty in the community. Or even the church as, as, as well too. Might be in good standing in the eyes of people. But the question is how do we stand in the sight of God? You see God uh, looks uh, beyond uh, you know, the, the physical. Beyond what we wear. You, beyond the skin. Beyond the surface. And God looks deep inside the heart. And he sees what is inside of, of them. And so that's why the Bible says, okay, that the fourth order is turning from our wicked ways. Then God says, he will hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and heal our land. So, is there anything tonight that you will need to make right with God? Is there anything that is wrong with us or with me? this evening, all right? No, I'm not talking about if you got all the makeup in place, all right? I'm not talking about that if you got a big to match, okay? I'm not talking about if you got all that, all that right, if you got all the cooking right and all the washing and the house cleaning and all of that. I'm talking about our standing with God, all right? If that standing is what it should be. How important? It is very important. Because if we do not turn from our wicked ways, then God will not care. God will not heal. God will not forgive. There's a story about a community that did a lot, a lot of logging. And so they felt the need that they needed to have a, a place of divine worship. A place that they can come, fellowship, listen to the word of God. So this community decided that they were going to build a church. I mean, they had all the locks, so there you go. Okay? And so they built a, built a nice uh, church building. They said, we need something more than a building. What do we need? We need a preacher. We need a pastor. All right? So they called one. He was a pretty young fellow. Young, young preacher. So he was a lamb. This young pastor, as he was hired by, you know, this community, started to, you know, mingle and visit with everybody, get to, and it, was a, it wasn't a big place. It was, wasn't difficult to, to get to know your members, you know, what they did, where they lived, you know, their lifestyle, and, and, what, and that's what a good pastor does. 
you know, a good pastor always tries to, you know, get to know, get to know the people and, and to visit with them and to, to talk with them and, and so on. And so upon, you know, getting to know the people, he was really alarmed to discover, wait a minute, there's a lot of dishonesty going on here among, among the people. A lot of dishonesty. So people, there are those upstream, what they will do is that they will float down their logs in the river down to the mill, down to the sawmill. And so each logger will take a metal die and stamp his name or symbol onto the end of the log to identify this is my log. See? I got my stamp, I got my log. Because everybody, that's how they transported their logs. Okay? <laughs> down the river, everybody. So how are you going to distinguish Whose log is whose log? So they came up with this idea, stamp the logs, all right? Right at the, you know, the ends that, the, the, that, the, the, that is called, they would stamp, stamp the logs, put the, put the symbol, all right? And so they will get paid for their logs. But what was happening is that some were catching those logs floating down the stream, and so they will cut off the ends of those logs. <laughs> And we and we stamped we stamped the logs with their own stamp. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's what those people are doing. Now they were coming to church. Remember they? <laughs> now, folks, remember they wanted a church. They built a church. They wanted a pastor. They got a pastor, and the pastor, of course, was getting to know the people and getting to know what they were doing. You see, now in the pastor's eyes, I mean, of course, that was wrong, that was sinful, that's your wicked ways, all right? It was robbery, it was theft, it was stealing. So guess what the pastor decided to preach the following Sunday when he discovered what was going on? I like that pastor, he took it the bull by the horns. Now he was going on in our living I mean, this is a new fella. I mean, he wanted everybody to like him. You understand? But this man was more, I like, I like this young pastor. You know, you, you remind me of myself. <laughs> you know how I preach folks? I preach truth. I preach, I preach the gospel. Amen? Amen? Praise God. I preach it. I don't preach a yellow gospel or what a long gospel. I preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. And so, his sermon, the following morning, it was about stealing. <laughs> it was about stealing. Well, quite remarkable enough is that after the pastor preached that message, people greeted him. The members greeted him and they complimented him. Pastor, what a fine sermon. <laughs> what a fine message. Handshakes and, and all of that. But folks, you would think that they would have changed their lifestyle and their sinful ways and their wicked ways. But you'd want to believe that after a message like that, direct, direct, nobody had to be guessing at all. I wonder if it's me, the pastor, preaching up about your doors here. <laughs> this is what they were doing, you know. But folks, here's the next surprising thing. The next surprising thing is that they continued on their sinful ways. They didn't stop. Even after hearing a message, a direct message like that, they continued on their wicked ways. So guess what the young preacher decided to preach the following Sunday after that message he preached on stealing. Well, he decided that he was going to preach this time changed it just a little bit, not too much. So instead of preaching about stealing, the next message he preached was on dishonesty. And in fact, he was more fired up than he was last week. So behind the pulpit, the pastor was on fire as he preached about dishonesty. Well, boy, amazing thing happened. Everybody again in the church 
came to shake the pasta and to compliment the pasta. Fantastic preaching, pasta. Yes, Holy Ghost preaching here, man. Anointed preaching. Well, folks, you would think now they will change. But the church didn't change at all. The members didn't change their wicked ways and their sinful ways. <laughs> but the pastor now have to decide what to do now. So here was the third week. And he decided that he was going to be very straightforward because like these people, these people ain't really getting it at all. I preach on stealing, they continue to steal one another's laws. I preach on dishonesty, they continue to be dishonest. I mean, I have to actually spell out this thing for them. So guess what the pastor preached the third Sunday? The pastor preached the third Sunday, his message was very clear. Anyone who cuts off someone else's law <laughs> and stamps it with his own is stealing another man's property and he is violating the word of God and the commandment of God. <laughs> I, I tell about that, that pastor. Mm -hmm. yeah? Don't you just love that pastor? Mm -hmm. Come on. Some of you say, boy. <laughs> I like the story here, but I don't really want to have a pastor like that. Huh? A pastor so direct, so straight, and messing around at all. I mean, this pastor was been thinking about, you know, what these people are going to do and what not. You know, all he was thinking about, you know what happened? These people have to get right with God. They must get right with God. And I, God has called me to preach. And so I have to preach the truth. You know, he stood by, he stood by his, his, his calling. Well, folks, after that third message, when he preached very clearly, anyone who cuts off the, the, the end, or someone else's law that stamp it with his own is stealing another man's property. Well, it could not have been more clearer than that. Well, folks, the church people got together and they fired the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, fired, they fired the preacher. Folks, I want to say something. If you have a pastor that's bold enough, if you have a pastor that's daring enough to preach the word of God, to preach the truth without fear, without favor, without compromising, please do not fire the pastor. In fact, raise his salary. Come on, somebody. Increase the salary. Increase the giving. Yeah, do more for that man because you have a true man of God behind the pulpit. Praise God. That's the kind of men that we need behind the pulpits today, folks. That's the kind. Those are the kind of men that you need to be your pastors and your leaders. Those that are honest. Those that are truthful. Those that are standing by the word of God, not compromising the word, not watering down the word because. They want to be favored by the congregation. They want to be liked by everybody. They want to be popular by everybody. So they preach them things to make the people happy. It doesn't matter what kind of lifestyle the people are living in. Folks, all the pastor business about them is that to make them happy. I just want to make them comfortable. And so that's all he is business about, folks. And guess what happened? Here it is that he's forsaken to preach the truth and these people are being misguided and misled the bible says the blind leading the blind yeah. that's what is that's what is happening today you know jeremiah i admire jeremiah jeremiah was a man that was called as a prophet as a prophet you read him god ordained him before he was even conceived the bible tells us uh, that god's hand was already upon Je Jeremiah. Before he came out of that room, God's hand was upon Jeremiah. 
And God said, listen, I have ordained you to be a prophet unto the nation. You say what I tell you to say. Not what the people want to hear, but what I tell you. You preach what I tell you to preach, not what the people want to hear. Folks, I, 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 I tell you that that is not an easy thing. Jeremiah wasn't liked for his preaching. He wasn't liked for the messages that God had given him. Because all Jeremiah preached was about sin and he preached about judgment. That's what Jeremiah's message was about. And when he preached about it, he was not popular among the people. The people despised him. Folks, they wanted to get rid of Jeremiah because why? Because he was making them uncomfortable with the messages that he was sharing. Because they wanted to sin. They loved their sin. They loved the lifestyle that they were living. And Jeremiah came and said, listen man, you got to repent of your sin. You got to turn from your wicked ways. And they wanted to, they wanted to, to, to kill him. So don't fire the preacher. Furthermore, don't leave the church because you don't like the preaching. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Some people are telling you they're quick to leave. They're quick to leave as soon as they begin to hear some sound, powerful doctrine and powerful preaching. They're ready to go somewhere else. But the Bible says in the last days, they will gather to themselves preachers and pastors having itching ears, wanting to hear what they want to hear and not what God is, is, is saying. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 8, Paul says, I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands. I want you to get that. Amen. I want men everywhere to lift up what kind of hands? Holy, holy. holy hands. Alright. This verse does not say what many want, want it to say. And that is to lift up hands. You know, sometimes I tell you, I mean, it's wonderful to lift up hands, you know. It's wonderful to lift up hands, folks. But God is saying, more than just lifting up hands. You see, when you lift up hands, let it be a holy hand. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is not just interested in the hallelujahs, you know. Let it be a coming from a holy life. Come on, somebody. Amen. God, you know, He just don't want to praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus. What God wants, folks, let it come from a heart that is clean. Praise God. Let it come, folks, from a spirit that is right with God. That is what God wants. He wants the praises. He wants the hallelujahs. But if he wants it to come from a heart that is right and in tune with him. That is important. Most important. People all over the place lifting up hands and saying hallelujah, praise the Lord. And folks on the, on the other hand, they're living such a sinful life. Yes. Do you think uh, lifting up those hands and not living a right life is going to make your life better? Come on somebody. If I come to church and I hall say hallelujah, praise the Lord, and I Lord and I do all these things, uh, and my life is right with God. Do you think that those things are going to impress God? Do you think God is going to be uh, going to accept my praises? Um, if my praises is not coming from a heart that is clean, uh, folks, uh, and a hand that is clean, uh, then how would it be acceptable to God? Uh, my offerings that I'm offering to God uh, must come from a pure heart, must come from a holy heart, uh, and then it is going to be acceptable in the sight of God. Can I get an amen, somebody? Yeah. I was going to tell you, you've got to prolong your mass this evening, put it on, you know, but Amen. I might get in trouble for that. <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. So what is the key in that verse here? First Timothy 2. The key is what? Holy. Can everybody say holy? Holy. Not just hands, what kind of hands? Holy hands. Holy hands, brother, sister. Those are the kind of hands that God says that we should lift up in church. We should lift up everywhere. Holy hands unto the Lord. Hands that are clean. Hearts that are clean. Not clutching on to, to anything. Not clutching on to, to sin. Not clutching on to idolatry. But holy hands lifting it up. Holy hearts unto the Lord. There was a, a great revival. 
a few decades, few decades ago. And it took place on the Hebrides Islands in the British Isles. So everybody knew Duncan, Duncan Campbell. Knew him because he was the preacher, great preacher. And so he came, and that's what he did, started preaching. But they found out later that there were seven men, young men, and they were meeting three times a week in a band. That, that's, yeah, that's what they were meeting, three times a week in a band. And what they were meeting there for, not to play cards. Come on, somebody. What they were meeting there for? Not to gamble. What they were meeting there for? Not to smoke weed. <laughs> eh? What they were meeting there for? Not to, you know, watch pornography. Oh. <laughs> what they were meeting there for, folks? Not to Alright. You have all kind of meetings today now. Yes. You have to watch folks. Their meetings, what they really are about in their meetings. But they were meeting in that band, not to play the fool, but they were meeting for prayer, praying, praying for revival. Yeah. Young men, look at that. You know, I always tell you, prayer meeting on a Wednesday night, they say that is for the older babies in church. That is what people say. But I like when I see young men coming out to prayer. We have some of them here this evening. Amen. Amen. When I show them, we have some young men. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. When I chance, we have some young men coming out to pray. When I boy, you're the youngest we have here tonight, boy. Amen. 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 Praise God. Coming out to pray. So who don't who say for one science don't have young people coming out to pray? Look around tonight. Look what young people we have coming out to pray. Praise God. Amen. Amen. They came out to pray three times a week in that band. They prayed for months and months and months. They were praying. But folks, nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. Have you ever been there? Praying and nothing are happening. Praying and nothing are happening. What do you do when you pray and nothing is happening? And you keep praying and nothing is happening. And you keep praying again and nothing is happening. What does the Bible say? Keep praying. Amen. Keep praying. Don't stop. The only time for us to stop is when God answers and we give Him praise. But we are stopping even until God answers. Church, that is how we have to be. That's our attitude. Praise God. We must not give up. We must continue to pray until something. Remember I told you about the acronym PUSH? Pray until something happens. Praise God. Don't stop. Keep on praying and praying and praying. And they kept on praying. Then one night one of the young men read a passage of scripture. Psalm 24 verse 3 and verses 4. Hear what it says. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may ascend, who may go up the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Notice what the, the, the text is saying. The answer. So, the answer is given. He who has clean hands. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Only the pastor. Is that what it says, somebody? Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Only the elder. Is that what the text says? Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Only the song leader. Is that what the text says, somebody? What does the text say? The text says, Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands. Underline that. He who has clean hands. Sanitize hands. If you want to put it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you know we could think a little bit about what we're going through here today. Now you understand the importance of not only physical sanitization but spiritual sanitization. Yeah. I hope this COVID has taught us more than just yeah. 
<laughs> sanitizing our hands and whatnot. Folks, this COVID should have taught us about sanitizing not just your hand, brother, but your heart. Mm -hmm. Our heart needs sanitizing. And folks, I want to tell you, you see what we have here? This is a hand sanitizer. Right here. Hand sanitizer. <laughs> you think this could sanitize my heart? Yeah? You think this could sanitize my heart? Folks, I don't care if it was 100% alcohol. Okay, you see the heart have to have a certain percentage, right? With it effective. It still can't sanitize my heart. Do you think it sanitizes my heart? Is the blood of Jesus? Amen. Amen. When I come and I say, God, forgive me of my sin. I repent of my sin. I repent of my wicked ways. This is what the text is saying. All right? If we want God to heal, we want God to heal folks, then we must get sanitized. Amen. We must get cleansed. We must get washed. And God says, uh, when you're sanitized with the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, what happened is that when uh, now you come, uh, I am going to hear your prayer because you have come cleansed. That's how you have come. Without any spiritual germs. You have come without any COVID-19. God says, I will hear your prayer. He that has a clean heart and a pure heart, he will receive blessings from the Lord. I am glad, folks. Some people think the blessings of, from the Lord could only be received by a certain elite in the church. Folks, that is not the case at all. Anyone can receive the blessing from the Lord. Praise Amen. God. You don't have to be educated to receive the blessing of the Lord. You don't have to be wealthy to receive the blessing of the Lord. You don't have to come from the biggest church to receive the blessing of the Lord. You don't have to have the biggest Bible to receive the blessing of the Lord. To receive the blessing of the Lord, the Bible says, simply come with a clean heart and a clean hand. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord. That young man said, as they were, as they read, as they read this passage of scripture, he said to the others, he said, fellas, what good does it do us that we are praying for revival? We are praying for revival for months upon months upon months. We are praying for revival. But look at the text. What the question we have to ask because we have been praying here in this band. Nothing has been happening and we pray and we pray. That is good. But listen, God has spoken through his word. So now he's saying to the other young men, listen, are our hearts pure? Are our hands pure? Our hands holy, our hearts holy. And when they came to that realization, folks, I tell you, suddenly they just dropped to the ground and they sensed the overwhelming presence of God, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God, and was convicted by the Lord of their own sin, of their own sin. You see, folks, when God's people become right, then you begin, you will see things happening yeah. in, the, in the community and yeah. in the country. Are you listening to me, somebody? Yeah. The greatest hindrance of revival has nothing to do with what's going on outside there. No, the greatest hindrance of revival is what's going on in the church. Yeah. Folks, are you following me this evening? That is the greatest hindrance of revival. It has nothing to do with the injustices outside there. It has nothing to do, folks, with the unrighteousness outside there. But it has everything to do with what is going on in the church. If the church is not holy, if the church is not cleansed, if the church is not righteous, folks, then there will be no revival. You could pray and pray and pray. You could fast and fast and fast. But until those hands that we have become holy and cleansed, until those hands that we have to become Come holy and cleanse. We will not see revival. We will not see the power of God, folks. What we need now is to get our hands clean and our hearts clean. Glory to God. And you're going to see revival, praise God. You're going to see the power of God. So they fell on the ground. Overwhelmed now with the 
about their own condition. And each person began now to confess their sins. And so they didn't know that two days later, the preacher, Mr. Duncan Campbell, decided to come to the Hebrides Islands. And all through that revival, people, when they meet one another on the street, they will have one thing to say to each other. Do you know what they will have to say to each other? As they met each other on the street, one thing they have to say to each other, not about where did you buy that nice suit of clothes from? I just love it. Where did you buy that nice pair of shoes? I want to get one like that. Where did you get that gold chain? I want to get one like that. Oh, where did you get that car? I want to get one like that. Folks, oh, where did you get your makeup done? That art is real good. I want to get one of that done as well. Where did you get your nails done? I want to get some. Do you think that was the conversation, folks? You know, you wonder what, what happening in the church today. People don't, yeah? We talk about everything else, folks, uh, but about getting right with God. Hello. We talk about everything that is wrong all over the place, wrong with everybody else. We talk about what is wrong with this one, what is wrong with that one, and whatnot. But we never, never talk and say, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? What is my problem? What is my issue? I need to repent. I need to make right with God. Rather than examining everybody else, we have to examine ourselves and do some self-examination, folks. The one to get right tonight is not your neighbor, your brother, your sister, your, your father, your mother, your husband, and your wife. The one to get right tonight is you. And when you get right tonight, when you get fixed tonight, praise God, you're going to see the mighty hand of God and give him praise of God. When they met each other on the street, they, met, they asked this question, have you done business with God today? Have you done business with God? What were they asking? Have you done business with God today? That's what they were asking, folks. Glory to God. The conviction was so strong all through the community. That is what people were asking. People were concerned about their souls more than anything else. People were concerned about becoming right with God more than anything else that was going on. That's what people were concerned about because they were convicted by the Spirit of God. And people only talk about making right with God. Have you done business with God today? In other words, have you confessed your sin before you, 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 before you left your house? Did you ask God to cleanse you and to wash you and to sanitize you? That's what was happening, folks. Have you done business with God today? Glory to God. Hallelujah. That is a very good question. Good question. So I ask us tonight, have you done business with God? Have you examined yourself? Just lay yourself before God. Just lay yourself before God. Put yourself on the altar like a sacrifice. Totally surrender. Yeah. That's what a sacrifice, when the Bible says, present your bodies a holy sacrifice. It means to say surrender. That's what it means to them. Yeah. Surrender, surrender. A sacrifice... Is a, is a surrender thing. A sacrifice and moving, you know. A sacrifice is there. It's signifying submission. Do what you want to do with me. That is what a sacrifice is. Do what you want to do with me. I am not resisting at all. I am not fighting back at all. I am a sacrifice. So the Bible says, a living sacrifice. This is what God is saying to us. Surrender yourself. Don't fight God. You know, like the cops trying to restrain somebody and they're fighting back. You don't see that often, eh? The cops trying to do their job, but you want to fight back. What do you want the cops and them to do? They will apply more force in common sense. Is common sense? Amen. That's their job. Their job is to, you know, like our granddaughter, Ayana, when you ask her, what she want to be? 
she want to be a police. <laughs> what she want to be a police for? She want to lock up people. And the way she get on it, I won't be surprised at all. You, know? you understand? Because you know she is she, she pushy and whatnot. Daddy John wants to be what, 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 what I tell you. Yes, and I, I, I want she to be a doctor, a lawyer or something, but she wants to be police to be good. <laughs> but I want you to be a woman of God though. The baby said, number one is a woman of God. Before anything else, a servant of the Lord. Can I amen somebody? Amen. Praise the Lord. Better be a servant of the Lord than a servant of the devil. <laughs> amen. amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. Surrender yourself a, a living sacrifice. Don't fight back. Don't fight back, says Lord. Whatever you want. That's what Saul did on the on the road to Damascus. Here am I, Lord. Here am I. That's what Samuel did. When he heard the voice of God calling, what did Eli said? Just say, thy servant, listen. God wants us to stop fighting. We have been fighting and fighting the Holy Spirit. Long, long time. Fighting the Holy Spirit. We don't want the Holy Spirit to work on us. That is why doctors have had to put you under some good anesthetic, you know? Because some of them, they're fighting bad, bad, bad. You understand? Fighting bad, right? When the doctor had to cut you open, folks, I tell you, if you are weak, you will let anybody, you in your right mind, thinking mind, you will let somebody take a knife and cut you like that on a life. Why fighting like that? That's why I had to put you under some good anesthetic. Amen. Keep your sleep even so they could do their job. Amen. That is why some people had to end up on, on your back so God could do their job. That is another message. Come on, somebody. Woo! Some people fighting so much against God. God said, I can't, I can't operate on you. I can't operate on you. I cannot do what I want to do with you because you're fighting too much. You're holding my hand. You're kicking like you take some karate lesson like you Jackie Chan. Fighting God. God said, I want to work on you. But you ain't giving me the chance to work on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some Christians are like, are too bold and God can't catch up with them to work on them at all. <laughs> They're running like that. Yeah. Long before we had Atu Bola, we had Jorah. You know? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. I tell you, watch me. You put Jonah and you put Atu Bola. Who do you think going to win? It's Jonah. Jonah is, a, is a, a runner. He is a runner. But I'm going to tell you something. He is world's number one runner. Because them fellas are running from, for goal, he, he running from God. <laughs> you never see a man so don't you think he could run from God? He's so what? He like the flash. Jonah like the flash. Jonah said, I, I could run from God. Eh? Oh, you can run from God. He feel he faster than God. God just you know. I tell you about laughing boy. Look at this God. He said he could run from me. He jumped in a ship and he think a ship could run from me. Hey, I make the seas and the world. You want to get a ship and run from me? Hey, God, God must put the hand on the waist and say, you can't be enough. He did the world. Oh, you come, oh, you just come, Gabriel, come, Michael, come, 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 see this one, come, come, see this one. <laughs> eh? This fella say he could run from me. Look, he gets it, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, come, come, this is, this is something, oh, come and watch this, oh, come and watch it. This fella here trying to run for me. Look, he in a ship there, and he think he could get in a ship and run me. <laughs> I tell you, but you know there's a whole saying, you have to give man a good long road. <laughs> so, so I, I, I'm gonna feel he could run for me. So God gave me a, a head start. <laughs> God gave me a head start. Okay, Jonah, run. Go ahead. Run, I go hold your back. Run, let me see how far you could run. Run, run, run. How far you gonna run? Hmm? Whether, whether could I flee from your spirit if I make a bed in hell? He's there. Yeah. Can't, I, can't, I can't run from God. Amen. And God pick up with him, folks. But folks, God had to, to do something to stop the running. Because while you're running, he can't go in 
Come on. Yeah. Why are you fighting? God can't work with you. Right? So he couldn't work with Jonah. You Jonah, had to get Jonah to a place. Jonah had nowhere to go. He back against a wall, folks. Jonah had nowhere to run. This is what's happened to some people. You know? As long as some people feel they could run, they could fight, folks. Let me tell you something. They will never come to this place and say, God, I surrender. Because folks, they could still move. They could still do this. They could, they could go here. They could go there. You see, they keep on running. And God said, I can't use you at all like that, you know. I can't, I could never, never lose you because, you know, you want to do your own thing. But when Jonah was in the belly of the fish, folks, where could he run now? Look at it. You see where God, God had to cage him up, boy. God had to cage him up. Jonah he can't walk now, much less to run. <laughs> folks, inside the belly of a fish, all around, look at Jonah 2, he described it. He said he was surrounded like a bass because the bones of the fish were like bass. God had to put him in a jail. Yes. Folks, before God could really use him. <laughs> so I want to say sometimes we have to be on our backs before we would hear God's voice in Sometimes we have to be laid out on an operating table to hear the voice of the Lord. Are, are, are you listening, somebody? Because as long as you can keep on moving and moving, folks, um, we never come to this place of, of surrender. Let's bow and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for your word and for the message this evening. We gotta, we gotta put away there, Lord God. Get rid of those sinful ways and sinful habits that we have, those rebellious ways that we have. Doing our own thing. Not what God wants. Following our own dreams and our own visions for, for our own rewards. For fame, for fortune. And God says, I, 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 can't, I could never, never use you. I could never, never, never use you that way. No. We have to, to come down. We have to repent of those rebellious ways and sinful ways and bad habits. Those evil ways, those thoughts, those desires. We've got to humble ourselves. Seek the face of God. Pray. God says, I will hear from everyone in your life. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Those of you this evening who have listened to this message and you say, Pastor, I said that prayer as well. God bless you. Why don't you give us a shout out and let us know of that prayer. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ truly as your Savior, why don't you say, right now, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin and I receive you as my Savior. In Jesus' name. Any prayer requests, Mother Zion? Thank you. We just have a couple prayer requests here tonight, and I'm uh, praying for Ryan. He's in the hospital, and uh, praying that his platelets will rise. Uh, for Richard, we have to give a praise to Richard because we prayed for him on Sunday night, was it? And uh, prior to that, we've been praying for him on tonight. He is with us in church in the house of the Lord. So we thank God that he is here, but we continue to pray for, for him. Father, uh, we just lift up these uh, two men before you. And dear Lord, we pray for Ryan, that God, that healing would, would take place in his life, Lord. And the faith flesh, Lord, will, will go up. And Lord, his body would be healed. And Lord, every organ would be healed in the name of Jesus. Dear Father, strength will come back. Dear Lord, our Lord, encourage his heart. And Lord, his soul, dear Father. And I pray, Lord, that you will continue to be firm in the faith. Thank you for Richard. He's here tonight in the prayer meeting. And we continue to pray, dear Lord, that all be well with him. Cancel every sickness in his body. Every infirmity in his body. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, God, for restoration of health and strength. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God.
So, my dear friends, uh, perhaps uh, we know right now is that nothing has uh, changed in our country. So, therefore, our Sunday morning service uh, uh, we are going to have it at nine o'clock, like we did on Sunday morning. All right, at nine o'clock and uh, nine to, to ten Sunday morning, and then Sunday evening from six thirty and to seven thirty. So, I want to just keep encouraging you. If these are broadcast, has been a blessing. Uh, to you, why don't you share? Uh, with your friends and, and, and your family, all right, and we do look forward in having you come and to uh, join us in worship of the Lord. Come up at Power and Science Ministries, uh, right here, Governor Road, Last Lomas, number one, all right, and we're looking forward to seeing you and your family uh, this Sunday. It's uh, it's Father's Day, very uh, special day for all the fathers, uh, and so. Only thing is Sunday evening, we will not have that regular Sunday evening service because Mother's Day and Father's Day are the two Sunday evenings that we give uh, off. All right, so just be fun this Sunday morning at nine of nine o'clock. Praise God. So God bless you, bless you, bless you. All right, send those prayer requests and those comments now. Okay, in Jesus' name, amen, amen.